This is Digital Byte Computing. We're going to go over the detailed steps on how to configure a Airport Extreme base station. So we're going to be using one of the newer Airport Extreme base stations, um, not an Airport Express. The Airport Express setup will be slightly similar, so you may be able to follow this guide to an extent, um, but some features on the Airport Extreme won't exist on the Airport Express. Uh, so this is one of the newer ones. Again, if you have an older Airport Extreme, the steps may be similar, uh, but may be slightly different depending on the versions of uh, Airport Extreme that you have. Now, what you'll find is on the back of your Airport Extreme, you've got uh, four network points. One of the points will be the WAN point that goes, uh, a cable goes from the back of that into your modem. So your modem, we're assuming, is already connected to the internet, you already set up that appropriately and you're able to access the internet. So from the back of one of the points on your modem, you're running that into that WAN point on the back of your Airport Extreme. The other three points are for connecting them physically to a computer, okay, or to another device. So if you don't want to use the wireless uh, option for certain devices, you can also run a Ethernet cable directly to it. So that may vary depending on what sort of setup you have. There is also a USB port on the back, which can be used for a printer, a, while, a, a USB printer so that you can access your printer wirelessly, or for your um, uh, USB external hard drive so that you can access your data wirelessly that way. So. We're assuming that it's all plugged in, it's all connected, um, and your uh, airport is, is on. So in the drop down of your airport on the top right, you should see your Airport Extreme listed here. So if it's a brand new device, you should see it listed. So we are gonna click on that. It should open up Airport Utility automatically. If it doesn't, then you can just go into your spotlight on the top right and just look for the Airport Utility. So that is now going to go and scan uh, that uh, device to see if there's any previous configurations. Let me just clear that off, which has been grabbed from my computer. Okay, so we've got a brand new Airport Extreme here. We're going to give it an, a, a name for the network, a name for the base station, and then passwords as well. So the network name, this is the name that you want for your wireless network. So the name that's going to appear when you try to connect to a wireless network from your computer or from another device, an iPhone, an Android, um, a Windows computer, what have you, the drop down, the name that you're going to have is this name here. So we're going to call it Red Ghost 2 gigahertz. We're going to go over the name in a second, why I've said 2 gigahertz. Okay and the base station name. So this is the name of your Airport Extreme. So if you're gonna go and configure some things on the Airport Extreme, you wanna give that a name. So for now, let's just call it Airport Extreme, and we're gonna give a password that is difficult to know. That way it's not easily accessible. It must be at least eight characters, okay? And we click on Next. So that is going to do some initial configuration and apply that to your airport and do what it needs to do. So the airport, little warning here, this airport extreme will create a network uh, and it's just saying some things regarding your uh, ISP and your ADSL or cable modem. Okay, so just maybe follow those steps if it's not uh, having any, any luck in connecting it. You may need to just unplug it and plug it in again. So I know it's working on my side, so I'm going to leave it as is. Diagnostic and usage, do you want to send um, error reports, for example, over to Apple if there's an issue? I'm going to say yes, just because it just helps Apple uh, developing a better product next time uh, with less bugs. It's going to apply some more settings, and it's, uh, I think it's going to be rebooting the device slightly as well um, so that we can go and configure it and set it up appropriately. Setup is now complete. Red Ghost 2GHz is now available. Done. 
Okay, so now you'll see that under this, that was blank before, under internet, we've now got Airport Extreme listed. You will see that on your device itself, you'll have a orange light on the front of the Airport Extreme blinking. That means it's got an issue. You'll see that on here, it's blinking as well. It's got a number two, which means it's got two errors, okay? Now, another thing that you may want to note is in your airport list here, you'll now see red goes two gigahertz listed, which is what we just created now, which is excellent. So what we want to do is we want to select this. It's finding issues connecting to an IP address, etc. Uh, it's having issues with internet connection and no DNS server. So let's go and fix that and configure that appropriately. So we're going to select edit on here. Oh, let's try that again. Edit. Okay, that's the name that we gave it before, Airport Extreme, and the password that we gave it before. And we're going to say remember this password in the keychain so that it doesn't ask me every single time. It's an option here to allow setup over WAN. So this is if you've got appropriate port forwarding in place. We're not going to go into detail on how to do this, but you can essentially um, control your airport utility and configure some stuff over the internet if you so choose to. So you don't have to do it locally from your computer. Similar to what Back to My Mac can do, uh, you can actually sign up in here with your Apple ID and your password. And if there are other devices, uh, a Windows, a, a Mac, uh, a iPad, what, ha what have you, that can have a service using Back to My Mac enabled, uh, you can also enter the Apple ID in there and you can configure your airport utility from there as well. We're going to leave that blank for now, but you can do that. It's a really cool feature. It makes it easier to manage it from other devices as well. Internet. Okay, so this is where we had the first problem. So the reason this is having an issue is because uh, I've got this set to uh, DHCP and it's having issues finding my DHCP server. So I've got an actual computer set up as a DHCP server. We're not going to go too much into what DHCP is and what it can do, but in a nutshell, DHCP will provide IP addresses to devices on your network. So when your computer or when your wireless device or an iPad or iPhone or what have you uh, tries to connect to a network, it has to have an IP address assigned to it and that looks for a DHCP server or a, or a service that is providing DHCP uh, enabled onto it. Now because we haven't configured this, it's having some issues finding an IP address. Yours may look okay, and you may already have IP4, the subnet, and router all populated properly. You could try clicking Renew if it's having some issues. In my case, I'm going to set up a static IP. I like to have static IPs across all my devices. You may not need to do this, okay? So this is completely up to you. But again, the reason it had problems is because my modem does not have a DHCP enabled. Most modems will. You could already have that configured. Mine doesn't, so I'm going to set up a static. All right, so let's give my airport an IP. We're going to give it the subnet mask and the router address. So this is the address of my router, which we will say is our modem, okay? And DNS server, so I've got a DNS, which I know. Now, what you may want to put in DNS server is the DNS servers of your ISP. So your ISP may have provided you some DNS servers so that you can access the internet. Um, so you may want to put those in there as well. So we've just configured an IP version 4 address. You've also got IP version 6, uh, which some companies, some homes may want to use it. I, I would say it's not needed right now. We've got plenty of addresses still on IP version 4. Uh, so IP version 6 isn't, isn't readily uh, used that, that um, often as yet. In internet options, you can go and configure a whole bunch of other things relating to IP version 6. Uh, we're going to leave that blank for now. Okay, so I'm not going to configure that. In wireless, this is what we did before. So we already assigned it a name, red goes 2 gigahertz. This is the wireless security that it has assigned by default. WPA2 personal. You may want to adjust that depending on what sort of security you want. No security means you will just connect without having a password. Wouldn't recommend that because that means your neighbor can access your internet. 
uh, without a password. So you want to leave some security on there. You can do some enterprise stuff. You can actually have like a radius server IP and this is more advanced. We're not going to go into that. So we're going to leave it for now just as a WPA2 personal. Give it a good IP address as well. Uh, a good uh, password, sorry. So this is the password for your wireless. Okay. The password that we assigned here is to access your airport extreme. So to access this airport utility and configure it, it's going to ask you for a password. To access the wireless, so in your drop down list on the top right in here, it's going to ask you for another password. This is the password where if you uh, say open up your iPad and you connect to a, and you connect to a wireless network, this is the password that it's asking you for here. Remember, remember this password in your keychain if you so if you so desire that. Uh, guest network. Do we want a guest network? I'm going to say no. Uh, this is a network that um, you can have on and off uh, and won't really require much authentication. Um, I wouldn't recommend it. I just leave it blank. Now, this is where we get into a little bit something more complicated. So, as I said, we mentioned at two gigahertz. Under wireless options, you'll see that there's now five gigahertz listed here as well. The Airport Extreme uh, allows you to create a two or a five, 2.4 or a five gigahertz um, wireless network. So, two different frequencies uh, work at different speeds. There's pros and cons for each, depending on what you want to do, what your setup is like, what your environment is like. Uh, whether you want to be using 5 gigahertz or not. Give you a brief overview of the two. 2.4 gigahertz is more readily available across most devices. So most so newer devices and older devices that are on a wireless, uh, that have like a wireless card, for example, uh, will be able to use a 2.4 gigahertz generally without issue. 2.4 generally has longer range distance and can go through objects like harder objects like walls, um, etc., and floors and ceilings a lot better than a five gigahertz. Five gigahertz is more for newer devices. Best way you can find out is if your device can see a five gigahertz network, then your device can access a five gigahertz network. Okay, uh, but again, it is a shorter range uh, and has more trouble going through obstacles. Okay. So if you're going to have a uh, this set up in a, in a larger home or in a, a business, for example, you may uh, consider a 2.4, but you may also consider a 5 if you have multiple devices scattered throughout your office. 5 gigahertz will also be quicker than a 2.4. So it is a faster protocol and will allow for faster transfer of files between your um, devices. Okay, We're going to create one as well, and we're going to call it... 5 gigahertz. Okay, select your country. All right, I'm just gonna leave it as Australia. If it's not listed, it's not a big deal. Um, you can do that. Create hidden network if you want that 5 gigahertz to be exposed and uh, readily available. All right, so in here, do you want it to show up in this list or not? Uh, it gives you some extra level of security, um, uh, but uh, you need to know the name of the network to actually connect to it. All right, so in here, for example, you go to join other network. And it will ask you the name. Uh, channels, uh, we're not going to go too much into this, but essentially each frequency has its own channel range. All right. And other wireless networks in your vicinity, so in, say, your neighbor, in my case, I'm in an apartment. So I've got a number of other wireless networks around me. They're all going to have their own channel associated to them. So I'm going to pick a channel that is, um, uh, I guess, going to have the least amount of interference from other networks on my network, okay? So I already know that 13 and 48 in my 2.4 and in my 5 are the best ones for my situation. Best thing you can do is if you just go onto the internet and look for um, a wireless scanner or that, that can scan channels on your on, on uh, available networks around you, you'll actually see what channels other networks are on. And then you can set yours as far away as possible uh, from... Um, ones that are not uh, interlacing, like, uh, uh, I guess, um, looping over yours, okay? There is a theory behind all this. You can go do your own research. We're not going to go into that too much, but that's just what I'm going to set on here. Okay, so now I've got my 2 gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, and my 5 gigahertz, okay? Network, uh, from what we went on before, over here, 
I was saying that I didn't have DHCP configured on my modem. I've got a DHCP server configured. You can actually set your airport to be a DHCP um, provider of IP addresses as well. Okay. Uh, in this case, there are three options, DHCP and NAT, DHCP only or off. DHCP and NAT will do DHCP and will also NAT those addresses to your IP address of your um, airport. Now, this is a little bit a bit, little bit more complicated how to explain what NAT does. But in a nutshell, you've got a number of IP addresses on your network, say, you know, a range from 50 to 60. Uh, and on the network, uh, oh, sorry, on the on the internet, it's going to be provided as one IP, which is the NAT IP address. We're not going to go into the theory behind that. There is a little bit to learn about, but um, that's what NAT is. Uh, DHCP, uh, we'll say DHCP only, for example, if you want to set up your airport as a DHCP server. Okay, so let's say we want to say from 20 through to 29. Okay. So if devices on your network try to connect to your airport, to your wireless, it's going to search for a DHCP server and going to go, ah, I found one on the airport extreme. What IP can I have? The airport extreme will say any IP from 20 to 29 that is available. It's going to go grab 20. Next device is going to go and grab 21. Next device will then grab 22, etc. Uh, except for what has been reserved in here. So DHCP reservations, let's say you've got an IP, uh, a, a device, let's call it an Apple TV. We'll give it the, the MAC address. You need to know what the MAC address is, etc. We'll leave that blank. Find what the MAC address of that device is. And we're going to say, look, I know that 172.16.1.23 is, uh, I set it up as a static IP on my Apple TV. So don't assign this IP range um, over to my network. Okay, so 23. So even though I've said 20 to 29, it's going to assign anything from 20 to 29 except for 23, which was that reservation. Port settings, use it for IP version 6, but you can also uh, assign uh, and push out certain ports uh, depending on the IP range. We're not going to go too much into that there. Enable access control. When do you want um, these IPs to be assigned at a certain time? You can also do in the um, network uh, DHCP lease of the DHCP uh, server provider here. How long do you want that, that IP to be assigned to that device? Um, one day, you know, do you want it to only be 60 minutes? So every 60 minutes, it has to go and generate a new IP for that device. Uh, you can set that up accordingly. IGPMP. Uh, we won't be using that. I wouldn't recommend this for most small uh, home or even small businesses. Um, it's really used to communicate between hosts and routers and switches um, to register multicast groups, etc. We're not going to use that in our home uh, because we're not using multicast. Um, we don't have anything enabled on our network to be using that. So we're not going to go into that. Block IP6 connections. Um, yeah, let's do that. Not too sure what territory tunnels are. You can probably research that, but we're not going to be using it. And allow incoming IPsec security. Um, we're not going to be using that either. So we're going to say cancel. We're not going to be using DHCP because I've already set it up uh, on somewhere else. But if you want it, use it. We're going to say off. So I'm just setting up my airport just to be a bridge mode, just to sort of provide wireless uh, connectivity to my devices. And that is it. Disks. This is going up from what we said before. If you have devices um, like uh, USB disks connected to the back, um, little, little tip, you can also hook up a USB hub into that USB port and connect multiple USB drives uh, to your Airport Extreme. And they'll be listed on here and accessible on the network. Okay, so that is the basic setup. There are a few other settings on the top left here. So you can go into airport utilities and preferences. So how often do you want your airport to look for updates automatically? Uh, monitor base station problems, so it will give you alerts if there's issues, etc. Uh, you can export your configuration. So the actual settings that we set up here, you can export them to a file so that if you have a crash later or if you get a new device, you can just import those easily. Uh, so you don't have to remember how to configure all this. Uh, show passwords shows you the password that we just configured now. All these passwords here. 
uh, diagnostics and usage. Um, can you give you a whole bunch of information, you know, about your device? Diagnostic checks if you're having issues. Restart it from here. Uh, restore your defaults. So set it up uh, again from scratch. Go back to factory default. You can add a WPS printer as well if you want to. Uh, and that is the gist of it. So that is the whole lot. Um, I hope you did find that helpful. Uh, it's a pretty cool tool. Um, like it's a really good uh, piece of hardware for what you need. So if you did find this helpful, give me a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, and um, you can see all my other videos as well. So we'll finish off by just clicking update. It's going to say continue. So what that's now going to do is that's going to update that airport and you should see it all green. This should show up green. This should show up green. It means we've now got a network in place. In your drop down list, you should now see red, red goes 2 gigahertz and red goes 5 gigahertz for that. Uh, and that is essentially it. So that will now reboot it. Should show up all green. If it doesn't go green, it's just gone green. Go and repeat my steps again. So again, thanks for watching. See all my other videos. There's heaps of them. Uh, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.